So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I got to start off by just saying how excited I am to be back at NAV after a very, very long time. It seems like uh, it's been forever. Uh, hopefully, you guys are excited to be back as well. Anybody? Yeah? I find it a lot more fun to do these sessions when people are actually excited and in interactive. And I see old friends out in, hey, Brett. Uh, out in uh, the audience that I haven't seen in a long time. My name is Anil Jain. Uh, I lead the media and entertainment business globally for Google Cloud. Um, and uh, I'll just give you a really brief kind of uh, summary of what that means. You know, at Google Cloud, we're focused on uh, industry specific transformation. Uh, and in media and entertainment, our goal really is to help media companies transform audience experiences through innovation in how content is created, how it's distributed, how consumers are engaged, and how those experiences are, are monetized. Um, and we have a lot of interesting kind of approaches and solutions there. But today, we're going to talk uh, about uh, how we're uh, engaged and how we've been engaged uh, together with um, our good friends at Fox Sports on uh, really applying innovation in a particular area and what that means for content creation and production and what that perhaps signals for the future of media uh, and audience experiences. And with that, I'm very happy to introduce my good friend, Dustin Myers. Uh, Dustin, why don't you say hello and introduce yourself and tell a little bit about kind of what you do at Fox Sports. Uh, hi, everyone. And uh, I have to echo Anil's sentiments. It's just great to be in person. I think that uh, you know all of us that did a lot of these on Zoom and it reached enough, yeah. but it's great to see everyone. Um, uh, my title, yeah, um, Dustin Myers. I oversee uh, the production operations group for Fox Sports, which it was pointed out to me earlier today is kind of a wide umbrella with production and operations. You can get anything you want into that. Um, but for me, it is, um, it's our acquisitions desk, so think our sports news, all the content we bring in, breaking news stories, things like that. It's our post-production department, um, all of our editing, both craft editing, so features, things like that, but our quick turnaround editing, which is you know, Fox NFL Sunday, our, our baseball pregame show, things like that. Um, and then also our, our media management group, which is truthfully the curation of a 25, 26 year library, um, working your way through jewel events like the Super Bowl, the World Cup, things like that, and making decisions how, how we will enhance our supply chains for those jewel events. So there is a lot in that. Uh, <laughs> there is a lot there. Have, which you might wanna talk to Brad about because I think that's just is a way to get you to do a lot more stuff. But, um, uh, it's actually pretty fascinating, right? We've we've been working together for almost three years now, and um, you know, I want to make sure everyone kind of understood parts of what Dustin just talked about, right? We're talking about NFL, we're talking about you know MLB, we're talking about World Series, we're talking about the launch of the USFL. A lot of the most highly watched content in uh, the country and outside of the country, um, and you know, you're tasked with how those stories are effectively told. Right, how those live events are shown, how they're produced, and you said 25, 26 years of content. How much content is that in, you know, in like data size? Uh, yeah, I mean, for this group, it's, I think it's easier. You know, it's it's thousands and thousands of hours. But I think really the last time we estimated it, uh, I think it was somewhere in the 30 to 40 petabyte. Yeah, that's a lot of content. A lot of content. As this leads into what we're about to talk about, how much of that content is easily accessible and usable, or has how well, much? Had it been? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's a trick question. Uh, usable before we met each other? Yes. Um, it was a that's process. The, the setup here. Yeah, it was. Yeah, definitely. It was. It was a process. Look, it was not readily available. Yeah. It was an, an archaeology expedition on, of a media scope. You were either digging through unreliable paper logs, different uh, antiquated computer systems to find a tape, and then maybe you maybe it would be in the library, which was in another facility across town. Or unfortunately, the MAM we had was kind of your first generation MAM where it was all on prem. And, and if you wanted to search it, you know, the, the, truthfully, I, I can give you a quick antidote that the, the way we would find material, a lot of sports games, was we would go on YouTube <laughs> and we would look for, you know, say Joe Buck's call from the World Series, yeah. and we'd figure out the date it happened. And then we would go into our MAM and type in, type in that date range, and then we'd usually find 40 clips and then go through them. And unfortunately, I can't tell you how many times if we needed a sound by Joe Buck's call from the, the Cubs winning the World Series, we'd just use the YouTube clip, to be honest with you, because we couldn't find it. That, that was the real reason. So that was the state of things prior to uh, us meeting Google. Well, so thanks for sharing that anecdote. That is obviously one that we've shared a few times. Um, and it's pretty fascinating if you think about, you know, what's the reason behind that, right? You have technology 
that hasn't yet necessarily caught up to what all of us as consumers are used to already, right? In terms of the power of search, the ability to find content on demand, to find the content that we want when we want it, and then to be able to use it. But, but think about this, as consumers, we have that expectation. So when we're consuming media experiences, why isn't that easy to do, right? And I think, you know, if you, obviously a lot of you have been in this industry for a very long time, this is not a uh, one-off kind of, you know, unique singularity, right? This is a problem that repeats itself in many different aspects across media because we have generations of technology and consumers are moving faster than perhaps, uh, you know, a lot of the significant technology we've invested in. And I think everybody, whether you're a vendor, you're a media company, uh, you're a cloud platform, we all are kind of trying to figure out how to accelerate this. So given the, the story, you know, that anecdote you just shared, um, you know, one of the things obviously we're very excited about, and this is what we want to talk about today, is Google Cloud and Fox Sports have together been uh, innovating uh, in the area of kind of production asset management uh, with a service that we call the Intelligent Asset Service. And this is a solution um, that we have built hand in hand with Fox Sports from the beginning. Um, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of the team that has been involved uh, through, you know, blood, sweat, and tears on both sides in the audience today. Uh, it's been a lot of excitement. It's pretty phenomenal to see it come to life. Could you, Dustin, kind of walk people through what it is and kind of the journey we've been on together? You know, highlight whatever you want and I'll throw in some comments along. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think the, a good way to do it is just to say, how did we get here, right? So I, I threw out that antidote of, of what it was like at Fox Sports when we, before, you know, before we came to Google. And it really started off with, look, we need to replace our, our environment, but we, not only that, we need to change how we work, to change how everyone works not just in media management, but kind of across the product, the supply chain. And, and I think the change, and it really came from above, our, our boss, Brad Zager, is, you know, is well known for this type of disdain for the status quo. He said, look, everyone, everyone's looking at this from the wrong perspective. They're looking at these solutions from a technical perspective. We wanted to look at it from our producers, our creatives, they're the consumer of what we're putting in front of them. That's the tools that they want. Like you said, with the consumer tools at home, they're right. easy to use. So we did, a, a, uh, we came out here actually, and over the course of time through conference rooms and scoring people and meetings and conversations, I think we looked at 33 different companies. And we, you know, we had a big book of everyone and we did an RFP and an RFI and you name it, we did it. Right. We went through the whole process. And we sat down and looked at each other and said, not one of these really does what we want. We don't want to go to the cloud just because we think we should. We don't want to make a huge investment that really doesn't get us where we wanted to be. And, and I'll forget, David and Reed, who are in, 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 the, in the audience here, we went back to, to Fox in LA and we kind of laid out everything and our boss walked by and he goes, just do a Fox YouTube. That's all you got to do. <laughs> It'll be easy. Just do a Fox YouTube and you'll be great. And so we all kind of just shrugged at him and we're like, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the contribution there. Um, <laughs> But then through different channels and different ways, we met some people at Google. And we met some more people at Google. And the next thing I know, we're up in Mountain View, like three years ago, I think, mm -hmm. talking to you. And we pitched it out. And I have to say, I think it was one of the best pitches I've ever seen. But it was really came down to what Google is great at. People, for, the user first. Yeah. We needed a manual to using these products. And I think that was the key, was we wanted something that could be consumed by our people. And I think we had aligned visions of using technology to change your environment and truly make it better in a different way than we had, we had seen an opportunity to do before. I, I think that, that was the crux of how we got here. Now, what it is, it, it's a lot of people, like you said in the audience, is hard work and a lot of, you know, a lot, a lot of toil together yeah. because truthfully, we built something that did not exist. Right. You know, we built on top of a platform that did and storage that did, but as far as a, a tool or a, you know, like a service as it is, that truly meets the demands of your consumer if your consumer is in production, which we are, but I think it could, it, it could go across many businesses, but specifically for ours, it's just easy to use. And, and the most important part of it, which, we, which you know, I, watch, I walk the floor today, and I, I, I've yet to see someone have the search. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the business that we're in, it is finding those nuggets to tell a story in a compelling way. And if, you, and if that's what you're looking for, then you need the best search in the world. And, and, and my friend here, you guys make the best search in the world. And I, I, I can tell you that now that we're at the phase where we're actually using what we call the IaaS, the, you know, sort of, everyone loves their acronyms. But now that we're actually using it, it has blown us away in ways we never thought possible. 
And now that we, 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 we make a joke actually, we, the USFL for Fox launched two weeks ago and we called it the hardest soft launch in history mm. because it needed to be a soft launch but yet it needed to do everything right. to support a production. But nonetheless, we, we have looked at the search abilities and, the, and, and, and what it's brought to our users and, and I'll be honest, every single one of them has been blown away. You know, I mean, you, you can go to most MANs today and you can say, hey, you know, if I get my metadata right or my keywords right, I might find something. But if you want to type in, you know, Tom Brady angry, that's probably not in your metadata. But, you know, if we type it in on ours, it comes back. Throwing his helmet, angry, making faces. It, 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 I mean, we actually play games on the things we can find and, and <laughs> where we're headed. That, and I think that's the exciting part. That's is, awesome. Is we've changed. We set out to change something and, and we did. Yeah, well, thank you for your partnership. Of course. Let, let me explain a little bit more so you guys have a sense of, um, of what this is. So the Intelligent Asset Service is really using, you know, on, built on the Google Cloud platform, it's using Google's search, knowledge graph, um, our transcoding and live streaming capabilities, our uh, Anthos multi-cloud platform, all put together in a solution co-designed with Fox Sports to actually do the things that, that Dustin is talking about. Um, this is something we're happy to, you know, as it, it uh, uh, goes through a little bit more of the paces with Fox Sports to actually show the world uh, and we'll actively demo it. A lot of our, our you know, partners have seen it already. Um, but this topic is really uh, beyond kind of just that solution and capability and it's really thinking about how do we unlock innovation to transform media, right? And uh, you know, one of the reasons I joined Google Cloud, you know, three plus years ago was specifically because I saw the opportunity for how cloud capabilities could in fact drive that transformation. Um, you know, but for cloud, big data doesn't happen in the way, you know, that it is actually being used today. Uh, a robust analytics platform, the ability to scale AI and ML and actually make use of it. And this is a great example of not just search, but also ML. Uh, models that are being applied. Uh, within an organization like Fox, how did, how did you get you know, the, the bigger Fox to actually embrace this you know, build it from scratch partnership in an area of innovation that was unproven at the time? I think Fox, it's kind of, that's the culture there. I think across Paul Chisborough's group down through Eric Shanks and, and Brad Zager, you know, our senior leadership, they want you to experiment. I think the compelling argument for us was, you know, we had discussed a cloud migration, like we talked about that right. 40 petabytes, and it just wasn't the time, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was doing it for the sake of going to the cloud. When we came up with this kind of, you know, concept and, you know, format of what we were gonna do and brought it to them and said, this was, it, it, the, the theme I heard was it was, it was the right time. It, because of what, not only what it would accomplish, but what it opened up, like yeah. you said. Not only were you gonna fix the, 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 the curation of the Fox Sports library problem, but you were gonna open up the ability for us to do other things with that media. You could do, you know, win probabilities. You could, mm. you, I mean, really, we could go on a list for hours of what we could do, because once what we realize is that once you put your media in the same place, yeah. it, there's no limit to really how many, how many tools you could run against it. And that, that's really one of the things we're just starting to see, like you said. Now that we're starting to go through the system through its paces, we're looking at, you know, for some of our betting content, like mm -hmm. is there, what, what can we do there with probabilities or, or not only like we've given tools to production, can we give tools to the audience at home? Mm. To let them maybe curate more of what they see or information that's valuable to them. You know, I think that you, you see the different ways you can take all that data. I think that's the, one of the great things about the cloud is it, it kind of democratizes your, your media in a different way that you can work with it and you're not bound by maybe the rules you had before. And I think we, we're learning, and we're just, well, honestly, it's in its infancy of what we can do with this. Mm -hmm. We started with the, with the main goal. Right. But I think that was part, like back to your question, that was the pitch to above. And look, it, you, you work in a good place when they let you do something like this. Yeah, you know? yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Can you, to make it a little more tangible, you know, obviously the USFL launched, um, you guys are planning for all these future events in, in a number of the different leagues. What are some of the things that you and, and uh, Sobel and Reed have thought about in terms of use cases that you see happening uh, by applying this solution and this innovation to your workflow? I mean, I think that when we sit in the room and we play, we call it, can't we just? 
Mm. Um, but no, we've talked about everything, and I, and I feel you know your Google team here has heard it. Like, can we do a search that's not only our media but you know Twitter mm. or or social media? Because there are use cases for that across some of our events. Um, we go further and we say, okay, so now that you know we've kind of tackled the post production side, how far into production can we go? You know, can we do camera to cloud? And can we use AI and ML to essentially help produce our broadcast? You know, so I think there's, there's, there's we, we, we're looking at different ways, you know, ingesting at the truck directly into the cloud and doing playback for our studio shows from there. It's a lot, a lot of the possibilities are things that we think about within the production ecosystem, but there are different parts of it that, that has been opened up because this is where we keep everything. Got it. So just thinking about, you know, there's, there's a, a number of different things that we've talked about as kind of a future roadmap once you know we get past the intelligent asset service. Mm -hmm. um, if we step back and you know look at the broader industry, not just Fox Sports, right? Because I mean, within Fox Sports, part of what we talk about is unlocking the value of this content that's sitting in the archives, mm -hmm. right? How do you see this type of you know, solution? Maybe maybe not even just this particular solution, but the application of AI and ML and search to content everywhere. How do you see it unlocking content value for you know, streaming services that are rising around the world? What do you think is gonna happen in terms of the way in which stories are told? No, I think, look, I think there's a, a couple avenues that this changes. I think that the discovery of what you have on your hands is, is it's a revolutionary way to look at it. You will find things in your library you didn't think you exist, that existed. Simple as that. Whether you're, if you're a streamer that, you know, if you're, if you're making documentaries, you can train models to find things that you would have never found before. It would have taken an army. Because we, I've seen that firsthand. I think across different businesses, I think the concept of using machine learning to train, change, excuse me, train models to search for things is, is you know, it, I think it translates to multiple industries, medical, oil and gas. I think that, you know, aviation. I think that there's different use cases across all of it. I think it's really, I think you can change out the labels for what those parts are, and then you can expand it into multiple industries. With, um, as you were saying that, uh, another question came to mind. As we look at kind of the way in which sports are experienced and have been for quite some time, the sense we have as we talk to a number of our, our friends and partners at the various sporting leagues, and you know, there are some new, new things arising as well in terms of new forms of sport. What do you think is gonna happen to the overall nature of the kind of media fan experience in sports. I know this is, you know, this is not intended to be a leading question, but it's more of, you know, you're sitting there, you have, you and your team have spent so much time in all these years actually producing some of the biggest sporting events in the world. What What is changing, right, in terms of the way consumers expect content to be ready and consumed, and how do you think that's gonna actually impact the way in which you uh, drive production and the way in which maybe even, you know, sports are designed? I think that you have to take a step back, like you said, and look at, I don't, I think there's, there's it's easier to look at sports as what's not changing, right? Mm. Every piece of it is. And I think that the, the consumer now expects a different presentation or the option to consume whatever they want from an event. It, look, for years, sports was just, let's watch together, and right. here it is. It's like the, the proscenium arch of a theater. But that's it, that's all it is. And then you start seeing the bonus streams and the bonus cameras, and now with USFL, you know, we have 72 audio channels that we can work through to cut sound different pieces. And one of the things we were discussing recently as an example, you can't go through 72 audio channels in real time right. and pull bites out. We're lucky if we can pull three or four anecdotes from the game out. But what if you trained a model to look for specific pieces? Because I think that's where the cloud changes this experience mm -hmm. for, the, for, for the consumer at home. You can't, there's not enough humans in your company to find these things in the right amount of time to make it relevant, but you could do this with ML. So I think that when you answer the question of how does it change the viewing experience, it's really only governed by ideas that you can think up. Because hmm. I think the consumer now, be, because of social media, because of mobile, because of the different ways we consume, look, you may not watch the game anymore. You may watch the highlights, read the box score, read the recap. You might watch someone do that for you as a 90 second clip. Yeah. Because there's so many different ways people consume, you know, the fandom, the tribal experience of sports, I think that it, it is just an expanding universe of what you want to make available. 
I do think that over time, I think that the, the line between the broadcast, social, digital, uh, no. Yeah. It, it's all, they're all just screens and we're all in the production business and I think that it's incumbent on all of us to help to break down those walls of, of what, is, you know, what is distributed where. I, I think the goal then is to just put out a bigger you know, experience for the consumer. To me, that sounds like your job in production just gets harder and harder. <laughs> well, I did say my title had a, you know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I see the same thing. I think there's an interesting mix between uh, enabling consumers to kind of drive the experience that they have, right? In terms of whether it's search, discovery, on demand. Uh, I want to watch the content the way I want to see it. Maybe all the sports content I watch should automatically be shown to me from the point of view of my home team, right? Um, or the, my preference in the particular game. Maybe I can control which camera angles I watch from. Um, all of that is there, but then there's also the value of curation, which to date has really involved a lot of humans, but in fact, if you can leverage machine learning, you can actually automate a number of those things so that the curated experience I get is actually a differentiated experience that might be more personalized for me but is not requiring more human effort on the side of the producer. So we're down to uh, a few minutes. Um, I do have another question for you, but before we do that, maybe we can turn it over uh, to see if anyone has any questions from this really excited crowd. <laughs> I know your team said they were gonna heckle you if we didn't get any questions. So. Um, the, M the initial ML models were built by the Google team. Um, yeah, so, so the question uh, said is in terms of uh, the metadata and the modeling, was that built by Google or by Fox Sports? And, and Dustin was starting to answer. Yeah, the, the image models were built by Google. Um, some of the other metadata, either some of the league data or migrating some of the existing metadata was done by, by David Sobel and his or Fox teams, basically. Yeah. So a combination is the answer. And, and I'll just overlay on the, the comment, you know, I think it's a, it's a very good question because a lot of it, it comes down to what is the data on which you're training these models, right? And obviously Fox has, you know, the content and the history. So those are Fox specific models, right? But the power of what we kind of bring from the existing knowledge graph and the existing models we have are on celebrity recognition, object detection, action and intent, um, obviously speech to text, a number of these kind of core horizontal capabilities that when combined with the sports specific ML data actually creates a very powerful combination. So, so the question is how much data um, do you need to actually develop those models or to run through to build those models? Um, I think what, what did we come up with? Thousands was the minimum. Yeah. Yeah, a thousand to ten thousand. If you want to teach, I mean, I use touchdown. I think it was the you know the data labeling was up in the thousands just to, to make it functional. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Any other questions? All right. While you guys are thinking of of, of the next question, you know. Um, I can imagine that a lot of people sitting here are thinking like, okay, how did they, you know, how did they actually figure out how to partner in this fashion, right? There is, you know, let's just be very frank, there's NAB, there's a whole slew of vendors, including cloud providers, and then there's a number of media companies of all sizes and, and kind of, um, and obviously the larger media companies out there command kind of a, a lot of attention, and then there's this constant you know, what can we sell you next, uh, you know, kind of uh, perspective that a lot of people worry about here at these kind of shows because of course we are collectively trying to advance the ecosystem and the industry. Um, and so when we're sitting up here on stage saying we did something new and built something pretty innovative that, you know, we're just giving a teaser of but will kind of fundamentally change the way in which certain types of content are produced, People may be wondering, how did you establish such a partnership? How does that work? Um, and you know, we've we've had very open conversations about kind of setting this thing in motion and managing it. Can you speak to a little bit about why this partnership works and you know what makes it successful? Um, and and what some you can even share, you know, what are some of the challenges you think we had to to work through and overcome? 
I think it worked because neither of us saw it as a transactional. This was not a time and materials one-off. Right. This was two companies that believed in changing in not only this industry, but other industries, and this was a place to jump off together. And I think we both trusted each other, and we both looked at it in that way. And I think that the relations, look, anytime you build something from scratch, and you have a hyperscale cloud provider, and you know, one of the legacy sports networks, it, there's, a, there's a lot of things we need to learn together, mm -hmm. but I think that, I, I would commend the teams who are here, that they, they've worked through it together, but I think that, you know, I think that there's, you have to find a common language of how you're gonna work together. You have to define your goals, what you're trying to work towards. Um, but I think it's really a, a trust is how this relationship came. It's, it's a partnership. You know, we, we basically sat down together and said, look, we love all, uh, there were a lot of parts of Google that made this relationship make more sense. Mm -hmm. To answer that part is, we were already into Google, at the time it was Google G Suite, which mm -hmm. is now Workspaces. Right. So we were already well into that. As you can tell, we're kind of the honks of the Fox Corporation. <laughs> but we loved it and we were already integrating and we, you know, we liked the zero trust way. And, and a lot, and I mean, truthfully, we were planning World Cups and Super Bowls in, in Workspaces. Right. So for us, it was like another extension of the Google ecosystem made complete sense. In fact, one of the things Neil and I have talked about is integrating workspaces with right. the IaaS and seeing what we can do there. But it, there, there was just an, a synergy and an alignment there that, that really just grew. You know, and, I, and I think that the trust to work through a lot of the, the technical challenges of this, I mean, we've, you know, we had to refactor it once. Yeah. You know, there's been, the media migration was not the easiest thing to do, especially when you're dealing with 30, 40 petabytes of media. Right. Um, and in truth, it's, it's not done yet. I mean, yeah. we just soft launched it. We're working towards, you know, using it for the NFL season and, and, you know, baseball and the World Cup. But we continue to just keep pace. And I think the teams, deserve, they'll deserve a lot of credit for that. Um, and I think that there's a spirit of innovation between both groups that, that's, I think, been a thread that's been key. Yeah. Thank you for that, Dustin. I, I do think, you know, trust is actually core the foundation of any kind of business relationship and partnership, but communication is the other thing I would emphasize. Like, mm. there's many times where, you know, anyone on the team, we just kind of pick up the phone and, uh, and kind of work through challenges or issues or opportunities. And so I appreciate it. Thank you for your partnership. Um, do we have any more questions? Go ahead, Reed. I see it. <laughs> That is a great question. I almost feel like I planted that question, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> um, so it, it's a great question. Right now, um, I will say very soon, um, we are actually working towards, um, of course, making everything work well at Fox Sports um, and putting it through its paces, make sure we get that wrapped up. We have members of our engineering team here right now that are um, uh, key members of, uh, of the team that are actually driving kind of all of uh, the, the iterative, uh, you know, bugs and features and all the things you do in, in great software development. So uh, later this year, our goal is to um, start presenting this to others. Um, and the way in which that's gonna actually go to market will, will actually be in partnership with uh, some of the companies that are here, um, you know, systems integrators and um, some of the, the MAM vendors um, that are out there uh, will have the opportunity to leverage the underlying intelligent media search um, capability. So um, you know where to find us um, and we'll be happy to, to start kind of talking to you about that journey. But yeah, second half of this year, I think in earnest, we'll be having those conversations. Awesome. Oh, I think, oh, is, yes. I mean, I think the 72 an channels are players. Okay. In the USFL, I think we've mic'd all the players, the coaches, the refs. Um, naturally, that can't just be aired. Um, <laughs> the censorship <laughs> problems might be there. Um, but no, I think, you know, if, the USFL's been an interesting, tr you know, ex lab for us in, in the sense of production technology. You, you, you can mic the players. You can carve out moments and dramas that you, you, you may not get access to in another sport. So for us, it's been great to pull those in, go through them, and then maybe a few times a game we share something, a moment like that. Yeah. Not yet, but we've toyed with it. But once you, once you have the audio, 
Once you have the audio, you can actually do a lot with it. Can. Much like what you said about moving the media into the cloud, suddenly you can play with it in a lot of different ways. Um, one thing, just I, I know we're, we're down to the end of time here, but Nadine, thank you. Um, one of the things that, um, that brought to mind is you know, what you shared with me and, and Brad shared with me is even, you know, it's, it's quite an interesting scenario with USFL and Fox Sports and Murdoch ownership that you actually are building a sports product as a media product. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting experience for us, like you said, we, we're the league. And it, it, it's been trying in some ways because when you're the broadcaster, you have a lot less responsibilities. But when you're the league, yeah. you, everything is yours. But it's been great because it's been the first sport that we've used the IAS on. Yeah. And you know, it, 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 while we're working through the paces of getting, you know, it's the crawl, walk, run. Right. But I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of things we would just love to start running because you see the potential, yeah. you see what we can do, especially as we move down the road with it. Yeah. Well, exciting times for Fox Sports and for the industry. Dustin, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you Thank all. You.